The drive toward a possible conference title starts today for two-time runner-up Monmouth. It's the Big South opener for the Hawks with Presbyterian in the way. College football next on ESPN. We have that mid-October feel in the air just a mile from the Jersey Shore with Eddie Occupinti. I'm Matt Harmon. Partner, interesting game here today for both of these teams. Monmouth, who joined the Big South a couple of years ago. Presbyterian, a team that's transitioning out. One thing that's been a common denominator for these teams, short of one game when they played, a tight football game we should expect today. Yeah, Matt, and four of the five all-time meetings between these two teams. It's been decided by just 10 points or less. Presbyterian beat Monmouth in two of the first three times in this series. You mentioned it. It's always a close game when these two get together. Mama's first ever Big South game was down in Clinton, South Carolina. As now we look to this afternoon and a Mama team, as you mentioned, that has its sights set on a Big South championship. Only blowout in the series was here a couple of years ago when these teams played in 2017. Let's do a quick little recap of what we've seen so far from Presbyterian. 0-5 overall, 0-1 in league play. Last week, a tough loss in their conference opener against Campbell. Yeah, but Tommy Spangler even mentioned it to us. He feels his team is starting to play better football. They're starting to come along. Over 100 yards and a career high on the ground for sophomore Jerry is Jeter last week. Should be an interesting game to see how Presbyterian attacks it for Monmouth. They had a bye two weeks ago. They went into a game against Wagner, probably expecting a little bit more. It's been an up and down non-conference slate so far for the Hawks. Yeah, big performances against Albany and a really good account of themselves on the road at Montana, but it was a Kenji Bahard-led last second drive, a Lonnie Moore touchdown that got Monmouth the win last week against a really game Wagner team. We'll take a quick time out here. When we come back, we've got the opening kickoff for you. It's the last scheduled game between Monmouth and Presbyterian in the Big South. I can't believe it. That cop brought his karaoke machine. No, I can't believe how easy it was to save hundreds of dollars on my car insurance with Geico. Go, Kevin. Go, Kevin. No, no. Believe it. Geico could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Boom, boy. Discover the new language of travel. Bon boy. Marriott Bon boy. 30 hotel brands, endless experiences, rewards reimagined. Go Lighting. We make it happen. Hard work, a love for the game, is mandatory down here. Sacrifice, a desire to be great, lives down here. Excellence, the will to compete, persists down here. This is the Big South, where winners are made. It is a beautiful October day here at the Jersey Shore, and head coach Tommy Spangler of Presbyterian hoping his Blue Hose can pick up their first victory of the year in his ninth season as the PC head coach. That spread across a couple of different tenures. He was the head coach from 2001 to 2006, took over the reins again in 2017, has had defensive coordinator experience at Louisiana Tech, Georgia Southern, uh, and Eddie, he was also a member of the 1980 University of Georgia National Championship team. On the flip side, same guy patrolling the sidelines for Monmouth football since its inception in 1993. That is head coach Kevin Callahan. Also a guy with defensive pedigree, was a defensive back in college and has big time experience as a coordinator, but that's forever ago. He's been the head coach here at Monmouth now in his 27th season. 
ball falling off the tee to start things off. It will be Mammoth who are in the dark blue jerseys today, the silver helmets and the white pants to get the football first. Presbyterian in the white jerseys, the white helmets, and the blue pants to kick things off. Set and ready for action. Parker Madry, number 46, will get this one up and going. Freshman kicker. Short and returnable for Mammoth. At the 10-yard line, this is Lonnie Moore, 25. Make it the 30. Good stick as he crosses the 30-yard line. Tackle made by Jeff Smith, the defensive back. There is number 11, who has been a starter at Monmouth over the course of the last four seasons. He is in his fifth year here. Hails from Baltimore, Maryland last week. Decent numbers in terms of completion percentage, 25 of 38, and had the last second touchdown throw to help Monmouth get the win over Wagner. This is Pete Guerrero running off the left side. He is stood up and dropped by Trent Carrington. Comes up from a safety spot. You saw the numbers that Bahar threw out last week, and, and that kind of, Matt, sums up that whole game at Wagner. It was a, a weird college football game. Neither offense could get much going. It flew by two. The game was over in two hours and change. Kind of a throwback old school game. Mammoth traditionally pretty high powered with Kenji Bahar at the helm. Loss of two. Bahar wanting to throw, has the middle of the field open, will find the big tight end, Sean Clark, who rumbles his way forward over the 50 and into Presbyterian territory, wrapped up and stopped finally at the 44. Clark, a big, strong target, six foot eight, fifth year senior tight end. He's been a reliable guy for Kenji Bahar so far this season. Into double digits with his 10th catch of the season. There is Zach Treadway, the junior wide receiver, making the catch. It's a big target last week in the win over Wagner. You can see Bahar, clean pocket, a lot of time to throw. And Clark, if he box out, boxes out a defensive back, gets him on his hip, it's just hard with that big frame to get around the tall tight end. Second down, let's call it four. We've got a flag coming. Start offense, number 62. Five-yard penalty, second down. Penalty on the right guard, John Galena. First time today we hear from our referee, Jerry Mangalanis. Crew today out of the ACC. Shotgun look for Bahar. It's Guerrero after the penalty. Gets to about the 40-yard line, gain of four. Here is that Hawk offense, which comes in averaging just under 24 points per game. We'll see a lot of different players as part of this unit. Guerrero, the guy who carries it most of the time. Lonnie Moore, Terrence Green, reliable receivers. And the offensive line anchored by the senior, A.J. Farris. Third and long. There's the catch made by Lonnie Moore, and he will step out of bounds with a yard to give for that first down. So the sticks will move for Moore, his 33rd catch of the year. We saw in our open at the top of the broadcast, it was Moore who scored that game winning touchdown last week. He's really proven to be a reliable target for Bahar. Bahar wanting to throw. I think that would have been a lateral had Terrence Green not caught it. He does, and he will lose, however, a yard. A you know, run pass option that just never really materialized. It seemed everyone was too close to each other. They ran it short side of the field and shorten up the area that a defense has to has to cover. You make it easier for him. And I don't know whether it's a late arriving crowd or, or everything else right now, Matt, just feels kind of kind of quiet in the stadium, doesn't it? Three receiver set. Bahar from the shotgun. Wants to throw, looks, Lonnie Moore makes the catch, fights off a tackle, and will get Mama Day first down. Noah Suber, the sophomore, was in coverage. And 
Moore, the more experienced player, able to make his second catch of the drive. Not the tallest player, but plays bigger than he is, though. Attacking the football here, that's not easy to do through a defensive back. And then Moore, who had some drops early in the season, uncharacteristic, he's really put those behind him and showing that he can truly be that number one receiver to replace Reggie White Jr. who's now in the NFL. This is Bahar, another zone read. He'll keep it and step out of bounds inside the 15. Mammoth, who usually has two sets of receivers, that second group in right now, which includes Brandon Batts and Asante Carney. The only guy doing double duty is Zach Treadway. The junior Joey Alderelli, the normal starter, out today. And it was Treadway, Eddie, last week who had a big game in the receiving core for Mama. Well, he was big on that last drive as well. Had a couple of key catches as Bahar led pretty much a perfect drive down the field in crunch time. Gene Scott and Sean Clark in at the tight end spot. Bahar looking left, throwing right. Lohr makes a good catch. Did he get a foot in? He did. Touchdown. Great adjustment on the football from Lonnie Moore, the fourth, the junior from Sicklerville, New Jersey, has given the Hawks a 6-0 advantage. Well, the thing that's going to jump off at this is the amount of time Kenji Bahar has to survey the field, look left, then come back right, and there's more again. High pointing the ball, gets the arm around, it gets the foot down. It was good coverage, just a better throw and catch. On for the extra point, the reliable Matt Mascara, who tucks it in the upright, neat and tidy. Almost a five minute drive to open up the game, and Monmouth has a seven nothing advantage. The Moore with a couple of catches on that drive, he gets his fifth touchdown of the season. Look at the strength of Kenji Bahar, Matt. He looked left, waited for Treadway to get open, it never happened, and then pretty much flat-footed, had the strength in his arm to find Lonnie Moore, and he threw it high where his guy could get it. The defensive back never turned to locate the football, and that's a great catch by Moore, who had three on that drive, including the punctuator. His fifth receiving touchdown of the season. This is what we talk about, clean pocket coverage there, but you have to turn and locate the football. Sanford Satcher on the outside. And you know, one thing we're going to see with this Presbyterian team when they get, Matt, so many young players playing, and it's something we'll discuss throughout the broadcast. That was a sophomore matched up on Lonnie Moore, Noah Suber, who was on Mamet's number one wideout. Again, position one thing but you've got to turn, locate the ball, and make a play. Decent return to take it out over the 25-yard line. Keith Pearson, who's a do-everything type of player, comes in today 34 yards away from 1,000 in his career as a wide receiver. There's the starting quarterback, Brandon Thompson, the redshirt sophomore from Union, South Carolina. Tough week. Last week in the conference opener to Campbell, just 12 of 27. Jarius Jeter, the sophomore, to start in the backfield. Trips this time to the left. Fumbled snap, and Thompson immediately has to fall on it to keep possession. The ball will go back to the 24-yard line. It's a loss of about three. Well, Thompson's the second leading rusher on this team behind Jeter, and this just a, a bad exchange on the zone read. You always talk about receivers taking their eye off the football. Well, that time Thompson at the mesh point, you saw him kind of look to his left to try to make that read on the defensive end, and it didn't happen as smoothly as they would have liked. He's lucky to jump back on top of the football. Second and long. This is Jeter, good hole off the left side, grabbed by Daquan Grimes, who will make the stop around the 31-32 yard line. A Presbyterian offense, which has struggled a little bit during the course of this season, averaging just over 14 points per game. Eli Teaslink, the guy in the middle. Boyd and Williams, decent tackles on the outside. And as we mentioned, keep an eye on Pearson. He's joined by pretty good wide receiver in Dante Myers. 
third, let's say six. Thompson has his pass deflected. Grimes getting his paw on it and knocking it down. Presbyterian will go three and out. Daquan Grimes, Matt, I really feel he's one of the most underrated defenders in the Big South. He is a sure tackler. That time he faked the rush a bit, let Thompson think he was coming in, and then he was able to get back into coverage, be active, get the hands up, deflect that ball away. Mammoth will put two returners back deep and wait for the punt of number 49, Aaron Wynn. It'll take a bounce towards Eddie Morales, the normal punt returner. He'll get it on the bounce and step out of bounds right around the 35-yard line. Now, Monmouth will get the football back when we come back, but this is how their first series ended. Kenji Bahar right down the field, finding Lonnie Moore first six. Touchdown lead early for Monmouth. This Big South Network broadcast brought to you in part by GEICO. Big South alumni can save even more with an alumni discount from GEICO. Visit geico.com slash Big South today. And by Marriott, the official hotel partner of the Big South Conference. And also by Sunbelt Rentals, we have equipment for that. Back with Eddie Occupinti, I'm Matt Harmon. Mom at the 7-0 advantage. Hawks will get it for the second time in this first quarter after a three and out from the Blue Hose of Presbyterian. This is Bahar who will operate from a shotgun look. Guerrero to his left. He will get it off the right side. Will work it forward to the 38-yard line for a gain of three. We've covered the Guerrero league now a handful of years. One of the things you come to expect is Presbyterian to play good defense. Now, you look at the numbers coming in, they're allowing almost 230 yards a game on the ground, about five yards for the opposition. But so far, they haven't allowed Guerrero, who's the leading rusher in the league, to get anything up front. Quick pass to the outside. Terrence Green Jr. with the catch, and he will get Mammoth a first down over the plane of the 45-yard line for Green, who came in as the number two man in the receiving core, his 23rd catch of the year. Colby Campbell in the middle of that defense really makes them all go. But, you know, in addition to Campbell, the guy who Tommy Spangler I think was most glowing about, Matt, was, was Jarrett Nagy. And 
Probably a safety size playing linebacker, a little undersized, but he really is a sure tackler in the middle of that defense. Here's the flip to Moore into Presbyterian territory. And listen, we'll have plenty of time to talk about it during the course of the game today. And we referenced it somewhat briefly in the open. This is a transition period for this Presbyterian football program who has a pretty long history, uh, but they are moving out of the Big South after this season. They'll be an FCS independent next year and then go into non-scholarship football where they will play in the Pioneer League. So with that, this transition probably has included a lot of little wrinkles in terms of talent, loss of scholarships. There goes Guerrero into the end zone. Touchdown. 48-yarder for Pete Guerrero, who finds pay dirt for the fifth time this season. Well, literally right on cue as we mention how they've bottled up Guerrero for the first series and a half. Pete Guerrero does what he's really become known for at Monmouth. Patience, find the hole, accelerate, and once he gets a step on you, you're not going to catch number 25. Guerrero with that run. Four carries for 52 yards. Monmouth with a 14-0 advantage. Two times the Hawks have had the football. Two times they have found the end zone. NCAA Division I FCS football is a game of perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship. As he works to honor the game, every FCS student athlete grows in his responsibilities as a student and as a member of his campus and community. Dedicated to personal growth and success in the classroom, the NCAA Division I FCS, every down, every day. I can't believe it. The car brought his karaoke machine. No, I can't believe how easy it was to save hundreds of dollars on my car insurance with Geico. Go, Kevin. Go, Kevin. No, no. no. Believe it. Geico could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Boom boy. Discover the new language of travel. Bon boy. Marriott Bon boy. 30 hotel brands, endless experiences, rewards reimagined. Whether it's the practice field or weight room, in class or on game day, we compete down here. We put in work, day in and day out, to take a step forward towards the Greeks, championships, our goals, excellence on every level. 11 schools, more than 4,000 student athletes, one attitude. We are the Big South, where winners are made. Pete Guerrero, good start to this game offensively for Monmouth. Kenji Bahar has a touchdown throw. Bahar with a touchdown run. Well, this is just great blocking up front, and you can see the hole the line creates, which allows Guerrero to get to the outside. When that happens, you also need great blocking from your receivers, which he got 48 yards to the house. The only guy in the Big South right now, Matt, averaging over 100 per game. He's done that in his career, and a lot of that because of the big plays, but you see his development, the patience, not just the blinding speed, to now go with more of an all-around game. Makes Pete Guerrero dangerous. Monmouth will kick off, keeping everything pretty tight today with five on either side for Mascara, who hangs it in to the win. Returnable from the 10-yard line from Pearson to the 20, 25. Gets run out of bounds around the 26, maybe the 27-yard line. Presbyterians and offense that really can't afford to fall behind by two scores. You know, they want to run the ball. They want to control clock, play complementary football with that defense. Spotting 
Mom with two touchdowns already, and now Brandon Thompson, if, if he gets into an obvious passing situation, just not, a few offenses are built for that, but this PC offense, really not built for it. Trying to get around the edge is Zola Davis. He's bottled up by Matt Mascara. Davis, the redshirt senior out of North Charleston. Well, he's more of the, the bruiser, right? He's the big guy in the backfield. He's not really made to go east-west, and Castronova read that well, as he really never let Davis get his shoulder square to the line of scrimmage. Mammoth will operate here with six defensive backs. Throw up for grabs down the far sideline. Pearson in step-for-step -step coverage was the fifth-year senior for Mammoth, Tymir Berry. That ball's incomplete. Yeah, Pearson is a reliable target. Did a lot of damage the last couple years in the slot, Matt, now having to play outside. And the disadvantage he has only goes five foot nine, so he's actually shorter than Tymir Berry on the outside. Dangerous in the return game, dangerous once he gets the ball in his hands. That time, Barry had good coverage. Thompson has Jeter in the backfield. Mammoth showing a three-man pressure and will bring it. Set up wide receiver, screen to the outside, ball pulled out by Grimes all the way back inside the five-yard line. Mama says they have it. It looks like they will. Matt Castronova coming out of the pile with it. I believe that it was Grimes who got a hand to strip it away. Well, they get the ball to Pearson with the quick screen to the right, and he tries to set up his blocks and allow it, but it's that guy again, Daquan Grimes. Knocked the pass down on the first drive, ripping it away, and Castronova with good hustle to jump on it. You really can't give your offense any better field position than first and goal at the two. That was a textbook strip by Grimes. Devell Jones coming in out of a wildcat look for Monmouth with Bahar, a wide receiver, to the left. Jones, the short yardage back off the left side, will walk his way into the end zone. It's been all Mammoth here in this first quarter. Hawks scoring for the third time in three possessions. The Jones working his way back from injury. He was a little banged up the last few weeks. He looked pretty healthy here. You set him back as the lone man in that Wildcat look, let him read the blocks, and he gets untouched into the end zone. Known as a guy who breaks tackles, didn't have to do it on that score. Mascara three for three on his extra points. 21-0, Mom at the advantage, 5-22 remaining in the first quarter. It has been all Hawks so far.
Well, you'd wipe this uh, with Mammoth. It's been all Hawks so far, and a good day for the fifth-year senior, Matt Castronova. Good tackle, fumble recovery, and certainly the way, Eddie, that you want to start when you're here at home. Well, what do coaches say? Start fast. They want to get out in front, play with a lead, and Kevin Callahan's group doing so right now, and a good start for the fifth-year senior, Castronova. Converted wide receiver that really was recruited and has been just an athlete throughout his time at Monmouth. Kind of does a little bit of everything for them. One of those, you know, if it's baseball, he's a utility player. Plays special teams. We mentioned has played wide out, but does his damage now in the defensive backfield. A good start to this game. Castronova, the high end over end kick. Fielded by Mac Simmons, who will take it out and be stopped shy of the 25-yard line, Hassan Chambers down the field covering. You know, one thing, and you and I obviously do a lot of these games, I think we've almost taken it for granted that since this new stadium opened up in 2017, just how good this Mama team has been at home, 2-0 and already, two and oh already this year, 12-1 and one coming in to today's game. Yeah, the only loss was last year in the de facto Big South Championship to Kennesaw State. Now those teams the last two years have met with that game on the line. Outside of that, Monmouth Matt has not only won at home, but they've put some pretty dominating performances fourth in front of the home crowd here at Kessler Stadium. Quarterback draw from Thompson. Gets to the 25, maybe a shade over. And if you're Presbyterian right now, you just need a drive. You need a couple of first downs. You need to rest your defense. You need to, to start to gain some confidence, but... Monmouth in those games has started fast. It, really, the thing that comes to mind is just how well the offense plays at home. And if you're, they're going to get performances from the defense that they've gotten already here with about 10 minutes into this game, they're going to be a dangerous team. And, and this group has been building for a couple of years now in the Big South. Hawks will be home next week against a difficult Gardner Webb team in space. Creighton Buchanan will make the catch. Gets Presbyterian their first first down of the quarter. A oh, nice job by Thompson getting out of the pocket, getting himself a clear throwing window. And then Buchanan, he saw he was upset that he lost his footing because it looked like he had some green in front of him. But that's what Thompson can do. He can use his legs, maneuver around the pocket, give himself a throwing lane. This is Jeter on the carry. We've got a flag coming out. I think this is going to be a face mask on the attempted stop from Kurt Almer. Defense, number nine, 15-yard penalty, first down. Actually, it's Eric Massey who's whistled for it. Well, Daquan Grimes had a, a similar play. He got a lot of football on this one. You're going to see the, the rip-out attempt from both Almer and Massey. They were both in on the play there, and as Almer tried to rip it out, it was Massey who got the face mask. So now Presbyterian get a first down via pass. Now you get a first down via penalty, and they're already in a mammoth territory here. Good opportunity here for the Blue Hose to try and creep back into this football game. Last four of the first quarter, it's been all mammoth so far. Thompson. Fakes the jet sweep, gives it to Jeter up the middle. A Mammoth defense, which is hard to run against. They've given up just 100 yards per game through their first five. Yeah, Mammoth defensively has struggled to stop the pass. They've already allowed 17 touchdowns in the air. But on the ground, they do a good job. They only allow about three yards a carry, under 100 yards. It's Going to make for a tough afternoon for Jarius Jeter, but Matt, that's the strength on strength, and if I'm Presbyterian, even though I'm down three scores, I'm going to continue to run the talented sophomore. Second and seven, play action to Jeter. Thompson looking to space, and overshoots Pearson out of bounds and incomplete. You mentioned that Monmouth Kennesaw game. It's the top two teams picked in the preseason poll. This year, the Owls will be back at home. They have beat Monmouth all four times they have played. That game is scheduled for November 2nd, just a little bit north of Atlanta. Book your tickets down there. I'll 
I'll be next to you on the plane. What do you say? That has been the championship game, not just last year, but the last two years. This is Jeter. Wrapped up and stopped at the 36-yard line. And Owl team, which again is off to another good start. Somewhere in the top 10, depending on what poll you might be looking at in the FCS ranks. They're really a, a program more than a team is what Brian Bohannon has down there. They graduated so much talent and so many touchdowns from last year, and they just keep rolling. Plug guys in into that triple option offense, and really it's the defense when you watch them on film that scares you. Four receiver set here on fourth down. Thompson and Presbyterian going for it. Doesn't have anything and runs right in to Eric Massey, who will be credited with the sack. Not much that Thompson could do there, was just trying to buy time. And Massey's got his first full sack of the season. Oh, just a long developing play. They wanted the slot right, and then Pearson is just locked up on the outside by Castronova, who continues to play a good game. And then you allow Monmouth, who had gone to their pass rush unit there. You saw DeAndre Clifton, the talented freshman, with the veteran Eric Massey. And this is a game coming off of a performance last week that for Monmouth wasn't their best in a win. They have come out on fire so far this afternoon. Bahar wanting to throw back shoulder and undershoots Treadway. There's Eric Massey, the junior from Teaneck, New Jersey. Bahar, who had started the game seven of seven, his first incompletion. You and I talked about this over the last couple of weeks, but I feel Kenji Bahar, and, and even though he's been the quarterback at Monmouth for a couple of years now, but he just feels nationally underrated, doesn't he? He's a good one, without question. Guerrero bouncing forward to the 48-yard line. I would agree. Doesn't get a ton of headlines. And I get that he's been, you know, the last couple of years, Reggie White Jr. generated a lot of the headlines for Monmouth, and deservedly so. He's in the NFL now. And Vinny Grosso, who's now on staff at Monmouth, had a great year. And Jake Powell spent some time with the New Orleans Saints. And Guerrero gets so much attention. But the guy that kind of makes it all go has been Bahar. Fly coming out. Procedure against Monmouth. Full start offense, number two. Five-yard penalty, third down. And really, if you go back the last couple of years, Matt, the, the group that really deserved a lot of the attention was a pretty veteran offensive line. Pete Riggi and Ryan Wetzel and company. and They were they were pretty stout and allowed this rushing attack to, to really kick it into a different gear. Bahar moving right, stepping up in the pocket, running left and gets dropped in the backfield. Nice open field tackle made by Trey Lanham. Red shirt sophomore, 6'1", 235. Good pursuit. And right there, able to wrap up a harm. A good pressure initially from Tanner Wilhelm up the middle. And then that probably would file under a coverage sack as well because Bahar does escape, but he just had nowhere to go with it down the field. Penalty there, getting Mammoth off schedule. It's their third penalty of the quarter. Ryan Cost on to punt for the first time today. Hanging in the air, fair catch is called for and made by Simmons. You know, penalties, Eddie, you think to that game last week against Wagner, penalties were an issue for Monmouth a week ago against the Seahawks. And so far, three in the quarter, even in a 21-0 game, looking for coaching points probably at halftime. That'll be something that I'm sure gets brought up. Well, last week at Wagner, uh, a deep touchdown to Lonnie Moore came off the board because of a penalty. A tremendous one-handed catch from Pete Guerrero came off the board. Penalty, they had a roughing the punter penalty as well. So definitely teachable moments came out of that last game for Monmouth in that narrow win over Wagner. The give to Davis off the right side. Gets maybe two. Could be the final play of the quarter. Presbyterian elects to do it. Tyler Huff, number 19, has come on at the quarterback spot. Huff, the backup. You see his... Info, 6'1", 200 pounds from Orange Park, Florida. 
does have a couple of touchdown passes on the year, completing just under 60% of his passes. Coming in has played in all five games. That takes us through the first quarter. All Mammoth so far, Hawks with a dominant first 15 minutes, leading 21-0. the official hotel partner of the Big South Conference for the best rates. Book directly with Marriott by heading to BigSouthSports.com slash Marriott. You'll support Big South student athletes in the process. That's BigSouthSports.com slash Marriott. Mammoth on the quarter change. Starting this next 15 minutes, 138 total yards to zero so far on the day for Presbyterian. Quarterback option. Ball popping out late. And I think the initial signal was maybe that Huff was down. Field, the ball was fumbled and recovered. Rolling on the field is First that down. is a fumble. I'm sure they will take another look at it. We'll do it even quicker. Yeah, before they get to it, let's see. So Huff's still fighting for yards. All right, we're, we're not going to be able to, from that angle, tell. Now, he's fighting. There's a defender around his ankles. He's kind of hopping through. Yeah, and they'll go to review now. You, you did see the ball come out, so let's, Let's see, this will be a good angle here. So he's fighting, he has Grimes on his ankles. Yeah, and the ball's out. Yeah, it looks like it's out before his knee hits. Now, 
Let's see. So he's still up. He's still up. And yeah, that's a pretty clear fumble and a pretty clear recovery for Anthony Budd. And this Monmouth defense over the last couple of games, Matt, starting to turn into an opportunistic unit, it's starting to it cause turnovers. Budd's been just a monster this season, leads the nation with five interceptions. And after this review, he'll add a fumble recovery. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down, Mama. So it stands as a fumble and a recovery. And for the second time today, Monmouth will get a turnover deep in their opposition's territory. Last time this happened, it was two yards. This time around, Monmouth will get it at the Presbyterian 24. Bahar will bring in a new weapon in Quentin Parham, the tight end. Guerrero, play action. Too high as he overshoots Brandon Batts. Incomplete, now second and 10. You know, you love after those quick plays and those quick changes of possession to go downfield, but and I know that we, we have to, as a game, as college football, be thorough, but I almost feel like that fumble, as great as it is for Monmouth on this drive, because of the review, doesn't it feel like it, it wasn't a sudden change, right? It's a, it's a not so sudden change anymore. Second and 10. Inside Guerrero, hopping through, will get himself about five to the 19 yard line. You know, Mamet's also getting in some, even though it's only not even a minute in the second quarter, Matt, you've seen a guy like Dre Tucker out there at the wide receiver position already getting some depth in the game. One of those young guys who hasn't seen a whole lot of time. Tucker wearing number 33, sophomore from Cinnaminson. This is Bahar looking into the end zone. Threw it to a spot, nobody there. Bring up a... Fourth down and a long five. Mascara will come on for a field goal. So that's a big time stop for Presbyterian defensively. You know, they give the football up. Monmouth forced another turnover almost in the red zone, and then they're able to force a couple of incompletions and ultimately force this Mascara field goal attempt. Mascara, seven of eight on field goals, this one is good. Mascara, the all-reliable kicker for Monmouth, adds three more on the scoreboard. Minute gone by in the second quarter. Back for more first half action from the shore. I, want it. I can't believe it. That cow brought his karaoke machine. No. I can't believe how easy it was to save hundreds of dollars on my car insurance with GEICO. Go, Kevin. Go, Kevin. No, no. Believe it. GEICO could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Go Lighting, we make it happen. Rise and shine, people. It's your perfect day. A chance to find inspiration and prepare for the future. To build lasting relationships and push the limit harder than before. This is your today, and it couldn't be more perfect. Until tomorrow, when it happens again. Bonvoy.
Discover the new language of travel. Bon boy. Marriott Bonvoy. 30 hotel brands, endless experiences, rewards reimagined. Turnovers always a part of the story in any game. The Mammoth defense has been able to supply its offense with uh, 10 points essentially with a couple of fumble and recoveries. Taquan Grimes, big afternoon so far. Eddie, you talked about him. Feel maybe the senior from Gaithersburg, Maryland, one of the more underrated players in the league. He just seemingly is always in the right position, whether that calls for a sure tackle to be made or the ability to force the turnover. We saw him on Presbyterian's first drive deflect a third down pass. He just seems to be one of those reliable guys that a coordinator can count on. High end over end kick downfield and coverage is Jajir Charles who will make the stop. A Presbyterian struggling to move the football. A special teams could be a great way for them to get it in better field position but Charles is a good-looking young defensive back for Mammoth, making his name now on special teams, waiting for the opportunity to get into the lineup as Matt Huff will come back on trying to atone for that fumble. You like him trying to gain extra yards. He's got to secure the football. Davis in the backfield. He'll get the carry on first and 10. We'll get a yard. Grimes among those on the stop. Davis with the carry. Looking over Davis to the the that Presbyterian sideline for Brandon Thompson. We have not gotten any word of any injury. But Huff, a guy who has played, as we mentioned earlier, in every game so far for Presbyterian this season. Davis empties out the backfield. Huff wants to throw on second and long, over the middle, has a target. That's Max Simmons who will make the catch. Make it third and manageable here for Presbyterian. And, and that's what they need to do, and you mentioned it. Get into those third and manageable situations. Don't maybe go for a play that's not there to then result in third and long. If four or five yards is available to you, you've got to take it. Make the short catch, fall forward, try to gain yards, and get yourself into maybe even some chances where you could go for it on fourth and short. Split back set. It'll be Davis to motion out of the backfield again. Third and five, quarterback draw. Good recognition by Huff, who's going to have the first down. And more works his way up towards midfield. Very Tackle well made Huff. by Bud. You see the freshman from Orange Park, series. Florida, make a quick, decisive, and as my broadcast partner said, correct read. Monmouth man coverage, they brought pressure with Grimes and Clifton, and no one home on the back side of that. Good recognition, good play by the freshman. Presbyterian with that run from Huff, 23 yards, more than tripling their total offensive output on that one play. Throws to the outside, Simmons makes the catch. He's wrapped up quickly behind the line of scrimmage by Justin Terry. Well, Terry knows that really there's no true threat behind him. And that time he could launch into tackle mode pretty early. Low throw from Huff, and that kind of play is normally a quick hitter, right? It's get it to the outside quick. Your receiver shouldn't have to kind of go low to catch the ball. You want to get it to him high and quick. Nice job from Terry coming up. Four receivers set on second and long. Huff moving from the pocket. A lot of blue shirts chasing him and will ultimately get him. He will get back to the line of scrimmage. Kakar, Davidson, Kyle Mullen all giving chase. Well, Huff really had nothing. And he shows his, his savvy by not throwing it in a tough spot. He kept it down. As you see, Thompson, he looks pretty pretty good. So he was probably pulled due to ineffectiveness. See if he works back in, though. We have seen these two quarterbacks split time. But Matt, by Huff not throwing it, it taught me a lot about the young man because he didn't try to force it where maybe the ball wasn't going to be completed. Presbyterian one of four so far today on third down. Huff out of the shotgun. 
running again. He's got a lane in front of him. We'll have the first down. Finally tripped up down inside the 35-yard line by Tymir Berry. It's a case there, Eddie, of Monmouth blitzing but not having anybody on the outside to contain. Well, you mentioned it. They did bring the house. And Huff has the mobility to get outside. He came into play today with 43 rushing yards on the season. He's going to be close to that on this series, it seems. He has shown that he can be active. He's got good recognition in Monmouth when they've gone man and Huff sees the backs of their jerseys. He's taking off. Huff has Presbyterian on the move. This time the ball popping out late as Dewan Cooper coming off the edge on the blitz, took on the block and ran right in to Huff for the sack. Well, does Cooper get credit for two tackles here? Because he gets both Jeter and Huff in one tidal wave. Oh goodness, what a play. We've seen Dewan Cooper have some highlight reel plays this season, and that's one of them. And not really known as a pass rusher, but goodness, he looks tremendous coming off the edge. That time, Presbyterian lucky to hang on to the football as Cooper running through Jeter to get to Thompson. That ball, uh, to Huff rather, that ball did pop out. Pearson sets up trips to the left. Second and a bunch over the middle. Myers can't hang on to it. And it will leave PC with a third down and 19. I, I like what I'm seeing out of Huff, Matt. I really am. He's extending plays when he needs to. And he did what he needed to do there. Got outside, created some space, bought time. Myers just took his eye off the football, started running before he secured it. That's the difference between third and nine, third and 10, and now third and 19. So we'll see what is necessarily in the playbook for this. Look for screen, look for draw, as to not put the ball in harm's way. Huff motioning. Simmons across the formation. There is that quick hitting draw for Jeter. Get to the 36 yard line, a gain of five. Make it fourth and 14. At this point, I would imagine Presbyterian would think about going for it, but they're bringing on their special teams unit. Yeah, I'm with you. I assumed that they were just gonna, gonna roll and go with it, but because they didn't get anything on third down, it's a harder go for on fourth down. Uh, to punt is the backup punter for Presbyterian. That's R.J. Bacon, number 37. And he will put this one into the end zone. And it will come out for a Mammoth touchdown. Dewan Cooper, part of a good defensive unit for this Mammoth team. This play blew up a good Presbyterian drive. All Mammoth midway through the second.
great news. Big South fans, Big South alumni can save even more on Geico car insurance with a special discount. Visit geico.com slash Big South for a free quote today. Beautiful October Jersey Shore day. Mammoth all smiles. There's Dewan Cooper, whose defensive play forced, helped force the punt, and Mammoth will get it back on the offensive side. Hawks with 24 points on the board, aided by a couple of turnovers from that PC offense. This is Kenji Bahar throwing to his left for Lonnie Moore, the fourth, who will get dragged down. Combination of PC players, Trent Carrington among those on the stop. Kwanzi Bethea in coverage as well. Five-man rush, Bahar hangs in the pocket. This time we'll find his other favorite target. That's Terrence Green to make the catch. And he's so much conversation about this Mammoth offense from last year to this year. How they're gonna get by without Reggie White Jr., without Vinny Grasso, both all league type receivers. White maybe the best wide receiver in school history. Down the seam as Moore can't hang on to it. Tried to get the one hand reception. But they are more than capable with guys like Moore and Green to carry the load offensively. Really, Matt, I think, is we'll take another look at this throw from Bahar, tried to touch it in to Moore, maybe a yard too, in, too far in front. But, you know, it was very much a, a team effort that is doing that. Moore and Green, I thought, were the two best offensive players on the field when Monmouth played at Montana. They really showed something in that game against a, a Grizz team that's one of the best in college football. But other guys have had moments. And Joey Alderelli, who's unavailable today, he had a big game in their first game of the year. We saw Zach Treadway. Don't forget Pete Guerrero's development as a receiver out of the backfield. And Sean Clark as well. So guys have stepped up for Monmouth. You're not going to replace the production of a Reggie White Jr. one for one, but can you do it kind of you know, in the collective with By a few committee. different players? Eh, it's sometimes the best way to go about it. Bahar wants to throw here. He'll flip it to Guerrero, who's going to have the first down and more. Good extra yardage after initial contact inside the Presbyterian 40 down to the 38. And remember, to finish the point as you'll get a look at the replay, this was an offense coming into the year that was going to be predicated on the run with Guerrero, Jones, and Jawan Fari, who's not with the team this season. And it's still a pretty balanced offense, but when you have a guy like Bahar, who has been building to this year, and now is ready to be the guy, you have an offense that is getting over 400 yards a game and still balanced. I think you're gonna see Mamet's rushing numbers now start to catch back up to its passing numbers. And that's behind Guerrero. You know, Devel Jones is working himself back to being healthy. And a lot of those passes too, those quick little screens to Moore and to Green, those are really an extension of the running game. Bahar wants to throw here, second and eight. Steps up, hangs in the pocket, floats it over the top, has Lonnie Moore, who gets pushed out of bounds around the five yard line. Yeah, and right now, Bahar is doing what you want your quarterback to do. He, he is managing this offense, not trying to do too much. That throw is exactly what I'm talking about. Leads his receiver enough, doesn't overthrow it, a nice easy throw and lets Moore run underneath. Five fifteen to go as Mammoth will look over and will use a timeout to talk about it a little bit. Hawks have it first and goal from the Presbyterian five yard line. Well, so far, it's hard to poke holes in this first half if you're Kevin Callahan and Mama. Your defense has forced a few turnovers. Your offense has been balanced. Guerrero has the long touchdown run. Bahar has been almost flawless, 11 of 15, 11 of 16, excuse me, for 150 yards and a score. And playing well in front of some, some young fans. 
who decided to come on out here on a pretty nice early fall Saturday. Interesting the way that uh, the Presbyterian schedule has kind of shaken out this year. This is the third of three in a row away after starting September with three in a row at home. And overall, five of six on the road. Losses at North Alabama and Campbell. Monmouth today, they'll be home for Kennesaw. And then at Merrimack and at Hampton. Here's DeVille Jones looking for his second of the day. Pushing the pile forward and in for another one. Jones with his second score today on just his second carry. And Monmouth continues to dominate. A pretty good percentage for Devell Jones. Two for two on the day, cashing in goal to go situations. Had a good surge in front of him from the offensive line. And Devell Jones is just too big and too strong. And he's starting to get healthy again for Monmouth as a compliment to Pete Guerrero. 31 to nothing, Monmouth on top of Presbyterian. Hawks have done it through the air, this time on the ground. Game over. Good blocking up front. Big hole for Devell Jones off that right side. And a Mammoth offense, which has been somewhat dominant. They have had to just punt one time in this first half. Four touchdowns and the field goal for Matt Mascara. Well, they've been balanced. Running it for almost six yards a carry. It, not needing a lot of plays. Just 28 plays so far in this first half for 222 yards and you see the score, it's been one-sided and the offense has been very efficient. Fair catch will be called for by Simmons inside the five yard line. Still have a hard time getting used to that every once in a while, being able to call for that. I think the reason is you don't see it very often. So when you see it, I've had the same reaction to that play Every game the last couple of years, you go, oh, that's right, you can you can do that. I think it's a really smart play. I do too. Uh, My initial reaction though is, what is he doing? <laughs> why, right. are you, why aren't you running? Then you go, oh, that's right, and it's a pretty good play. I do like that. To the 25-yard line, Presbyterian will have it here. 5.05 .05 to go in the opening half. Tyler Huff has stayed in at the quarterback spot. Now to the 30-yard line for Jarius Jeter. And here's why that play was more successful now than it was back in the first quarter. And it's the running threat 
that Huff presents will open up things for Jeter more on that zone read. When you have to respect the quarterback's running ability, then you give a pretty talented running back just maybe a couple inches extra room, which is all he might need. Huff, reverse rollout. Fights off the challenge from Cooper. And at the 36 yard line, catch is made by Nathan Lovett, the tight end. A Presbyterian team that doesn't use the tight end very often. But Lovett will get him a much needed first down. Again, created by Huff's mobility because Cooper was in on him in a hurry, but did well to get outside, complete the pass, get a first down. Jeter left side run back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a little forward progress. Mama defensive line had to go through some graduating players last year. And, and there's names there like Shoemaker and Almer that have stepped up into roles where they're starting to play better football as this year has gone on. Shotgun here on second and nine. Flip it to Jeter. Out of the backfield, big hit delivered. It's Cooper again. Some of these Mammoth linebackers, Massey, Cooper, Grimes, starting to tee off a little bit. It's thrown in front of Jeter, and Cooper again, just a, a missile, seeking Jeter out. He has been active all game long, and, and that's due in large part, Matt, that he's coming untouched. Two times now on this drive, once at Huff, that time at Jeter. Coming up on two and a half remaining on what is third and six for Presbyterian. Pressure coming. Huff steps up, but then gets dragged and grabbed. Brought to the ground by Massey. That will go as a sack for Eric Massey. Now, Mom, it's smartly taking time out, saving as much time as they can to try to put another score on the board. And this defense is playing as well as it has all season, going back to last week and including this afternoon. You see Massey is hit initially, but he gets back up. There he is at the ankles. You can tell how pumped up he is. It has been whether it's Thompson or Huff, either Presbyterian quarterback going back to pass has been under duress all first half. Difficult for a Presbyterian to get anything going offensively. 63 yards of total offense so far. They'll have to punt it away here with Aaron Wynn coming back in. Again, two returners back deep. Morales and Green. Wobbly, high hanging punt. Green will let it bounce. Couldn't get up in time to make a fair catch. There's a flag that has been thrown. We'll check the flag first. Catch interference. Kicking team, number 21. 15 yard penalty. Kick, catch interference. Yeah, Matt, we'll take another look. Now, the ball bounced, and see, Green called the fair catch, and, and that's the call. They're saying because of that contact, and that's a that's a touchy one, but because of the contact from Trent Carrington, it, Green couldn't come up and make the fair catch. So now, Mom, if you'll add some yardage on to that, Coach Callahan called timeout, saved the clock. So now he still has a couple timeouts, and it's up at the 40. 219 remaining, change of possession. The give to Guerrero to the 44-yard line. Coming up at the break, our Geico halftime show. We'll have 
scores and news from around the league. Take a look at the reigning players of the week. And Eddie joined by special guest today, head men's basketball coach King Rice will stop by and talk about the upcoming season for the blue and white. Bahar wanting emphatically to get the football. Throw over the middle and Moore can't hang on to it. Doesn't secure it, would have been a first down. Instead will bring up a third and six. You know, Matt, as much as Coach Rice will be my guest at halftime, we could probably get a third headset. And you know, Coach Rice was a big time high school football player, had offers to go play D1 football before he decided to go to UNC. You know, I wasn't gonna, I'm definitely gonna ask him about that at halftime now. Third and six. I thought once again you were looking for someone to take your place. You had maybe well, other Well, you've place, been trying to replace me for years. Other places to be <laughs> in the second half. Terrence Green will make the catch and will get Mammoth a first down. Anyone who comes in the booth pregame, there's a good chance Matt's going to offer my job There's to a him. good chance. Eddie, why don't you step out? Just go go grab yourself a water, and then we'll lock the door. Right. I don't have a key. You do not have so a key. So that's why We've you made I sure get of that. Yeah. <laughs> Into Presbyterian territory with 90 seconds remaining for Mammoth. Bahar, little play action to Guerrero. Thought about going deep. Instead, will now scramble, run, spin forward at the 40, and get dragged down at the 36. It'll be a first down. You see the maturation of Kenji Bahar. Maybe a couple years ago, he forces that ball in, but here he bides his time. Can see the athleticism he's always had. He just loves to make the big play with his arm. Wants to go downtown, has Clark who will make the catch. Touchdown, Mammoth. Sean Clark using all six, eight of that frame to haul it in. Another touchdown for Mammoth who has blown this game wide open. And that beautiful touch pass from Bahar is made possible because of the smart decision he made the play before. Pulled it down, scrambled for a first down, but now you get the full arsenal that the fifth year senior quarterback has. He made that play the down before, and now the touch pass to Sean Clark for the touchdown. Bahar's played a pretty flawless first half. Matt Mascara on for the extra point. Makes it 38 0 in favor of Mama. The scramble, the play before, and this touch pass, you can't do it better than that to the big 6 8 tied end. And he got behind the defense, took that one into the end zone, and you called it, partner. This is now Mammoth starting to flex its muscles a little bit here at the end of the first half. We said for the better part of the season, Mammoth has been up and down, three and two on the year. And today they're finally kind of hitting stride against a bit of an outmatched Presbyterian team. Well, we looked at the Big South pregame. We're going to do some more at halftime. You have Kennesaw State. You have this Mammoth team who lost to begin their season at Western Michigan. So there's an FBS loss. Then they went, Matt, in, in Missoula, Montana, and you and I were there. They lost to the Grizz, who are one of the best teams in the country and were very competitive six-point game in the fourth quarter. I think what you're starting to see now is this team in Big South play start to be that team that they expected to be in the preseason. It was Mammoth and Kennesaw coming into the year. Matt, I got a really good feeling that when we head down to Atlanta on November the 2nd, that will be for the third straight year, a championship game between these two. And I think this league will show over the next few weeks that it's gonna be deserving of at least two teams in the FCS playoffs. The winner of that game and most likely the team that doesn't come out on top. Eddie will be welcomed into the Big South offices with comments like that. I think it's Angling true. Angling for those two teams. I love it already. The conference season just started. Uh, but, you know, Kennesaw is a top seven team, depending on your poll. And when you examine the teams, if Monmouth goes on a run here and they win a couple of games in a row and your losses are to an FBS team and the number, let's say, three team in the country at that time, and obviously it's only one half in here, but, you know, this is what our job is. We can kind of look ahead. I just think you point towards that game, and there's a lot of business that has to take place before then, but it sets up nicely again. And there's improving teams in this league. Hampton's playing better than they ever have. Campbell, under Mike Minner, is playing better than they ever have. Second down 
and six. Less than a half minute to go. Here's Thompson to hand it off. Likely to be the final play from scrimmage. A little bit of a mishap there inside. The whistle, I don't think initially was blown, finally is, and that will take us to the end of our first half. A first half that all you need to do is look at the score and realize that it's been a mammoth day as the Hawks lead it 38 nothing. We come back, we've got our Geico halftime show queued up and ready to go. I want it. I can't believe it. That cow brought his karaoke machine. Nothing but a hard day. No, I can't believe how easy it was to save hundreds of dollars on my car insurance with Geico. Go, Kevin. Go, Kevin. No, no. Believe it. Geico could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Boom, boy. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, boy. Discover the new language of travel. Bon boy. Marriott Bonvoy. 30 hotel brands, endless experiences, rewards reimagined. Hard work, a love for the game, is mandatory down here. Sacrifice, a desire to be great, lives down here. Excellence, the will to compete, persist down here. This is the Big South, where winners are made. NCAA Division I FCS football is a game of perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship. As he works to honor the game, every FCS student athlete grows in his responsibilities as a student and as a member of his campus and community. Dedicated to personal growth and success in the classroom, the NCAA Division I FCS, every down, every day. Rise and shine, people. It's your perfect day. A chance to find inspiration and prepare for the future. To build lasting relationships and push the limit harder than before. This is your today, and it couldn't be more perfect. Until tomorrow, when it happens again. Imagine life without football. No Friday night lights, no pep rallies, no band. All that time invested to teach young men and women commitment and team spirit, gone. Football, where young men and women compete to be the best. Where bands, cheerleaders, and countless others take part in the team experience. Celebrate the passion that only happens every fall. Join the game. Geico Halftime Report with Mammoth leading Presbyterian by a score of 38-0. Hawks trying to pick up their fourth win of the season and open up conference play with at least what looks like right now a pretty dominant performance. Time to take a look as we always like to here at the break as the reigning Big South Players of the Week. Uh, Eddie good one last week for Gardner-Webb and Campbell. You can see uh, both the Bulldogs and the Camels well represented. When they come up here to West Long Branch, Jalen Cagle is a very underrated running back. 140 yards and a couple of touchdowns and a win against Western Carolina. I was super impressed with him last season, and he has continued to develop and has really become one of the best all-around running backs in this league. And I think something that you brought up uh, earlier for this Mama team who will try and make sure that they are playing perhaps for a conference championship when they see Kennesaw State later this year with games against Gardner-Webb, with games against an improved Campbell team. It's not a cakewalk maybe like it used to be to get to that game. Oh, by no means. There is better teams and teams playing, Matt, better football in this league 
up and down. We mentioned what Campbell's been able to do. It should have mentioned Gardner-Webb in there as well because they're playing improved football. You saw Brevin Allen and the highlights. And Campbell is a team I liken to Monmouth when they came into the Big South back in 2014 as the resources and scholarship came. You saw the improvement. I would look for the Camels to have a similar trajectory. Kurt Everett, the special teamer, Cam Davis as the rookie of the week. 38-0, Monmouth leads here at the break. Dominating first half performance for Monmouth at home against Presbyterian, 38 nothing. This kicks off Big South play, but we're just a few weeks away from the tip off of a different season, and that's MAC basketball season. And Monmouth led again by long time now. It feels weird to say that long time head coach King Rice, Coach Rice. Thanks for giving me a few minutes today. Well, that feels good that you say long time, Eddie. <laughs> that, that's good if you if you're able to keep your job. It's been eight years. I'm starting my ninth year then I'm very, very fortunate, and uh, I love being the coach at Monmouth. It was kind of weird, right? Already been nine years. It flies by. Hey, coach, you have a team now that comes in this season, a, a veteran group. You did lose a senior in Diego Quinn, but a veteran group from last year. Now working through preseason, how has the first few weeks of practice been? Well, it's it's gone well. Um, we're definitely going to miss Diego. He, he did what seniors are supposed to do and had a great year. But by committee, we'll be able to do the same type of things on the inside. Um, on the outside, we got veterans now. We got everybody who's been there, done that, um, had some ups and some downs, and now they're ready to do different things so we don't have to have so many downs. One of the things, Coach, that I always remember when we speak is the expectations and roles that players have from one season to the next always change. 
And now you've got a group, like you mentioned, that were counted on last year, but now they're older. You know, the Ray Salnaves, the Dion Hammonds, and now they continue, they're, uh, they're stepping up. And what do you expect from that group now getting ready for, well, like you Ray's, said, your ninth season? Well, Ray's a fourth-year guy now. Dion's a junior. We have Malik as a junior, uh, Marcus as a junior, George, uh, Lou's a senior. But Sam Chaput, uh is a sophomore this year, but I'm telling you, he has grown up as much as anybody. Our, our team had a great summer in the weight room with Tim coming back to being our strength coach. Their bodies have changed, and when you just look at our guys, you're going to see they, they look like grown men now, and I think that was the first step to us having a chance to be able to compete for a championship. And it's something that your team did a season ago. had such a memorable run through the MAC tournament and then through now an offseason, getting ready for this year. I was at practice the other day. You could feel the, the positiveness. You could see how competitive practice is. Well, that's what you, you hope to build, that uh, we have a lot of kids that can play and a lot of guys that want more minutes. And <laughs> we have some new kids that are really, really pushing the older guys, and that makes practice fun. And we'll have a lot of options. Um, some of our younger guys are super emotional, and it brings you back to when you were that young kid and you thought you were going to just come in and do all these great things, and it takes you some time to learn. But the older guys have done a solid job of keeping the young guys' heads in the right place. But practice does have a, a different feel to it, a different energy to it, and that's a, a big, big positive. Yeah, Coach, homecoming next week here on the football field, but let's step off the court for a second. I know a special weekend for you. It's a homecoming in the Rice household as well. Well, my son Alexander is a freshman up at Bucknell uh, playing up there on the basketball team for Coach Davis. And they did an article this week, and I've been telling everyone how much I've been crying that he's gone. But he's home. Uh, he came home for fall break, so thank you to Coach Davis. This year, Eddie, I did not give my kids fall break off. <laughs> and Coach Davis is a much better coach than me, so I thank him for allowing uh, their players to have fall break. And it feels great just to have them home. My house feels full again, and uh, it's only for a couple of days. But big smile on his face, big smile on, on Julian's face, and, of course, his mother. So we're, we're just a happy group today. Well, Coach, I appreciate a couple of minutes, and we're excited again to be able to cover your team throughout the course of the winter. We're all excited for the start of basketball season. Well, I'm super excited about it, but did you did you notice my you Under do look Armour? Sharp, Coach. I got this Under Armour on because Under Armour does a great job supporting our programs here at Monmouth, and we uh, we're very fortunate to look at this. Yo, you look wait, sharp. Wait, look, I'm on, a little. Now. Everybody doesn't get this nice Under Armour gear like the Mammoth Hawks do. Uh, Coach, like I said, we all appreciate a couple of minutes, and we wish you the best of luck for this season. We know it's going to be a great one here in West Long Branch. We appreciate it. Well, thank you so much, Eddie, and to all the Hawks fans. It's a great day to be a Hawk. That's head coach King Rice entering year number nine. Wow, goes so fast here at halftime on ESPN. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it.
Get social with the Big South. Join the always growing network of Big South fans on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more. You can also follow the conference source for game updates and on-site championship coverage via Twitter at Big South Game Day. Follow, watch, like, and share with the Big South Conference. Great spot with Monmouth men's basketball coach King Rice. Swing by, join Eddie for a few minutes. It's always a fun time of the year when you're up and going in the fall and thinking a little bit ahead to the winner. Monmouth thinking about picking up their fourth win of the year. And right now, Eddie, you can see just based on the numbers, it's been all Hawks. Yeah, Matt, whether it's been running it with Pete Guerrero, whether it's been Kenji Bahar, efficient 13 of 19 throwing the ball, a couple of touchdowns, one to Lonnie Moore, one to Sean Clark. Uh, you, what you have is two teams that are just in different stages right now, and Monmouth is starting to really feel itself in the Big South and trying to play for a conference championship. And as we've detailed, a Presbyterian team that is transitioning out of the Big South and into the Pioneer League. Take a look at some of the highlights. It's been an offensive day. Kenji Bahar, Eddie just gave you his numbers, 13 of 19, has the two touchdowns. Uh, that first one you just saw to Lonnie Moore, he's got another one to Sean Clark. Defensively, I think Eddie too, you've seen this mom of defense really, I'll say it, flex their muscles, causing a couple of turnovers. You're seeing some of the highlights of some of the big plays that the Hawks have made. So you look for, okay, offense, good day, check. Defense, good day, check. Special teams, good day, check. It's been one of those days where everything has come together. One, two, one, two, one, two. Eddie, talk. Check, 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 one, two, one, two. Check, 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 one, two, one, two. First half in the books. We start the second half here with Mammoth kicking off to Presbyterian. Hawks leading this one big at the break. 
as we start our next bank of 15 minutes. 38 to nothing. Mammoth up top. Fair catch will be called for and made by PC, who will come out to the 25-yard line and will have it first and 10. Maybe the question here, Eddie, in this uh, second half will be which quarterback will we see? We saw a lot of Tyler Huff. There was your starter, Brandon Thompson, who looks like he will be coming back on here to begin the third quarter. I was going to really talk about how much I liked what I saw from Huff in that first half with his escapability. He was four or five throwing the ball, but for only 12 yards, and that's been a huge thing, Matt, that we've noticed. PC and their lack of ability to drive the football down the field. Give is to Jeter off the left side. Huff did lead the team on the ground in that first half. Six carries for 38 yards, including a 23-yarder. Yeah, we saw Jarius Jeter with 30 yards on eight carries, but if PC's going well, Matt, they're going to have a lead. They're going to be able to pound the football with Jeter and Davis. And that right now hasn't been the case. Mammoth jumped on them early. It was 14 nothing in the blink of an eye, and they really never looked back. Split back set coming for Thompson. Thompson running off the right side. No gain on the play. Bring up third and eight. You see there Cooper in your shot, but also number 27, DeAndre Clifton for Mammoth Kahari Scarlett as well. The, this is their pass rush. They go third and long. You assume it's a pass situation. They get as many good pass rushers on the field as they can. You see Massey. And really there's one true defensive lineman for Mammoth on the field, and it's Scarlett who kicks inside from his defensive end spot. Thompson into the flat for Jeter, snuffed out quickly and dropped by Tymere Berry. A sure tackle, both Mammoth corners, Justin Terry and Tymere Berry are sure tacklers. And I don't blame PC trying to get the ball to Jeter. He's one of your best playmakers. There's not too much he can do with it if he's being hit pretty much two steps after catching the football. R.J. Bacon on to punt. Angles it to his right. Morales. Bypasses the fair catch, going backwards and hops out of bounds around the 34-yard line. Mom with offense to come back on for the first time in this second half. Hawks only had to punt it the one time in the first and second quarter. The mom, it's been so efficient with their plays. 33 total plays, almost 300 yards of offense. They're just, Matt, been not a lot to nitpick if, if you're the Monmouth coaching staff. Four for four scoring in the red zone. They have been just super sharp this afternoon. Three receiver set. This is Guerrero dragged down after a gain of a couple. Carried by Pete Guerrero. Guerrero is ninth carry of the day. We'll put him over 70 yards. Guerrero getting it again, weaving through traffic and We'll have a first down. Now close to the 44-yard line. When you, Matt, look back at the five Mammoth non-conference games, you mentioned three and two record. And then when you see how they're playing today, it just shows you how ready they were for conference play this afternoon with that challenging non-league schedule. Yeah, now if you're a team like Mammoth, who made the playoffs in 2017 as an at-large, missed last year, probably one of the last couple of teams out. 
once you get done with that non-league, now all of a sudden you become fans of every team that you played. You're hoping that Lafayette maybe can make some noise in the Patriot League. You're hoping that Wagner can do some damage in the Northeast Conference, that Montana keeps winning, that in the CAA, the University of Albany maybe pulls an upset here or there. It all now begins to build what you hope is a good resume. Blitz coming, screen set up, it's Treadway with the catch. Slides forward for eight, maybe nine. And if you look at the schedule, there's, like you mentioned, as we'll take another look at the Treadway catch. Set up, by the way, a really good blocking. But Lafayette in the Patriot League, you mentioned Albany in the CAA, Montana in the Big Sky, Wagner in the NEC. So doing a nice job of spreading it around where you can hope for success from a variety uh, of leagues. And then again, the Western Michigan game. Inside carry will go to Jones on third and short. Jones, up the middle. And Jones will get Mammoth an easy first down. I know Lafayette had a tough one last night at Princeton. It was an ESPNU national TV game. Albany, I believe, is down at Towson today. I know that we can go ahead and kind of peer at some of the other games as well. Uh, Wagner in the NEC is an interesting one. Duquesne, I think, is such an overwhelming favorite in that league. But also, look at the moments that Central Connecticut State has had this season. St. Francis has been pretty consistent the last few years in that conference as well. Trips off to the right side. Guerrero will run left and get stopped after a gain of one. I saw a stat this morning about Albany quarterback. If you remember their freshman quarterback, Jeff Undercuffler, already 18 touchdowns on the year. Albany's playing very good football. Pass to the outside, hauled in and caught by Terrence Green. A couple yards shy of the first down. Third down. Monmouth, a team that was picked How second in three. the Big South preseason poll behind defending champ Kennesaw State, which has certainly done nothing this year to give you any question that they are the team to beat again this season. Jones inside, big hole running through tacklers. Devell Jones at his best down to the 20-yard line. Yeah, we see this again. And Jones known for doing his damage in between the tackles. That's where Devell's at his best. North, south, not making too many moves, and just getting right to it. As Mammoth now starting to lean on that Presbyterian defensive line. Just outside the 20 yard line. It's Jones on the carry again. Struggling to get back to the line of scrimmage. Carried by Jones, stop made by Navy. You, know, you mentioned Albany before, Eddie, a team that is down in the Maryland area today. They'll take on a good Towson team. Albany three and three. They are one and one within the league play. It's starting to get now to be that fun time of year where conference plays up and going. And you'll see, I would think, in a lot of these leagues that are so competitive, almost weekly changes as to who's leading, what's the team on the rise, what team has maybe dropped off a spot or two. Especially in a league like the CAA, where Really, four, five, six teams have a chance to win. To the end zone, this one hauled in, caught, a foot in bounds for Terrence Green. And six more on the board for Mammoth. Well, Kenji Bahar right now is, is showing you the full arsenal. The touch pass over the outside shoulder, and Green beat his man one-on-one. -on -one. He got behind Suber, but we have seen Bahar now a couple of times. Just touch it in perfectly. Now his third touchdown pass of the afternoon. 16 of 23 for 233 yards. Good look at the ensuing extra point from Matt Mascara. Right at you. And Mammoth now jumping up even more. 
big lead for this Hawks team, 45 to nothing. Bahar going downtown to Terrence Green. I want it. I can't believe it. That cop brought his karaoke machine. No, I can't believe how easy it was to save hundreds of dollars on my car insurance with Geico. Go, Kevin. Go, Kevin. No, no. Believe it, Geico could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Bonjour. Discover the new language of travel. Bon boy. Marriott Bonvoy. 30 hotel brands, endless experiences. Rewards reimagined. Whether it's the practice field or weight room, in class or on game day, we compete down here. We put in work, day in and day out, to take a step forward towards the Greeks, championships, our goals, excellence on every level. 11 schools, more than 4,000 student athletes, one attitude. We are the Big South, where winners are made. NCAA Division I FCS football is a game of perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship. As he works to honor the game, every FCS student athlete grows in his responsibilities as a student and as a member of his campus and community. Dedicated to personal growth and success in the classroom, the NCAA Division I FCS, every down, every day. Presbyterian started playing football in 1913. 22 years of that from 1963 to 1984. Their head coach was Callie Gaunt, uh, recently passing away, Eddie. And you can see on the this year's edition of the Presbyterian helmet, they're honoring him with a sticker on the back. And when you talk to head coach Tommy Spangler about that, it's not this year's team honoring former coach Gaunt. It's the entire Presbyterian program. It's the entire university and the whole community in Clinton, South Carolina that has rallied together because of the man that Cali Galt was, the all-time winning as head coach at Presbyterian, three-time coach of the year. And when you talk to everyone around the program, you can tell the what Cali Galt meant to everyone associated with Presbyterian, not just football, but the entire institution. Best season in that time frame, 1979, when the Blue Hose went 11 and two and won the South Atlantic Conference Championship. Muscara to kick off. Mammoth a 10 play, 67 yard, almost five minute scoring drive. High end over end. Fair catch called for, will come out to the 25 yard line. I think if you're Monmouth too, Eddie, you're almost getting to that point of the game where you might start rotating some guys, taking some key guys out, anyone who's got any sort of nicked up injury, little knock. They probably won't see a ton of time the remaining part of this one. Yeah, 45 nothing. You probably have seen the final snap of Kenji Bahar today. I would assume Pete Guerrero and others. And you look on the field right now, and, and there are some other players starting to get loose. And with good reason. Monmouth has the Big South schedule in front of it the rest of the way. Anytime you can buy for your key players is important. I think Presbyterian will use a timeout. Play clock was winding down. Presbyterian, looked like the first time out of the half. They had a little issue at the last second before they were gonna snap the football. 7.53 to go, third quarter. We'll take a timeout. Hawks up, big.
by Geico. Big South alumni could save even more with an alumni discount from a Geico. Visit geico.com slash Big South today. And by Marriott, the official hotel partner of the Big South Conference. And by Sun Belt Rentals. We have equipment for that. Some good old footage you see as we get back to action here in the third quarter. This is the sixth time that these teams have played. Series that started in 2014 when Monmouth made the mo a move over to the Big South. The team splitting the first four games. Monmouth a win on the road last year at Presbyterian and essentially trying to close out the series with a win here today. We have mentioned PC making the move to the Pioneer League as an independent next year and then into their new league in 2021. And as far as uh, we were able to ascertain, nothing on the schedule between these two teams after this season. Good move by Keith Pearson as he keeps his feet moving. Runs through a bit of a challenge there. That old spin where neither the elbow or the knee touching, able to get the first down and a bit more. This is Brandon Thompson who has regained control of this Presbyterian offense. Handing off and giving it to Davis who gets to the 40. Presbyterian this year on the season in their five losses has not yet been shut out this year. They started their season in a little bit of a strange way. They had a game at Stetson on the 31st of August, a game that was postponed because of hurricane weather that came through the Florida area. So that game was canceled not to be made up. They had to kind of jump into a tough one against Mercer. Here's the zone read as Jeter Thompson get tackled inside by Kyle Mullen. That's what the Blue Hoes have dealt with so far. Mercer, Jacksonville, Eastern Kentucky, North Alabama, which does not count as a Big South game this year. And then the league opener a week ago in Bowie's Creek when they lost to the Camels of Campbell. Third down and eight. Presbyterian two of eight so far on the day on third down. Pressure coming. Thompson hopping over the rush for Monmouth. It was Adam Kakar bringing the heat, almost intercepted by Powell. Monmouth at that time rushing four, and Kakar is a big guy in the middle of that three, sometimes four, five man line for Monmouth. Almost got there to Thompson. Yeah, this defense has been as impressive for Monmouth as its offense this afternoon. Whether it's been slowing down the PC running attack, just two and a half yards of carry, or just being in the backfield. High but short punt coming up to make the fair catch was green. Aaron Wynn didn't get all that one. 532 remaining, change of possession. Hawks have an opportunity to add to a 45 point lead.
We mentioned that the transition period for Presbyterian somewhat already starting. This is the league that they will go into starting in 2021. The likes of Butler, Davidson, Dayton, Drake, Jacksonville, Marist, Moorhead State, University of San Diego, Stetson, and Valpo. It's been that USD team, Eddie, which has kind of been the best team in that league uh, for the last couple of years. Dayton usually a pretty good side as well. I think it'll be interesting for Presbyterian as they make that transition. Next year in Independent, in two years, they go into the Pioneer League as Eddie Scott gets his first snap of the season for Monmouth. And partner, I agree with you. It'll be interesting because San Diego is kind of the, they almost don't fit into that group because of how good they've been. And traditionally a team that gets to the playoffs and even wins a game. I'll tell you what you need in that conference is a pretty good travel budget. Because you're going from Jacksonville, Florida, to San Diego, to Poughkeepsie, New York, and really everything in between. Scott, who comes in, the transfer from Holy Cross, 6'4", 215, sophomore from Wall, New Jersey. Older brother, Gene, is the team's Jones starting again, tight end. And now we're starting to see a little bit of change in some of the skill Seven positions. Down. Looks like the offensive line has wow. remained generally the same. Guerrero and Bahar out. Presume their afternoons are done. First snaps for Scott. Third Monmouth quarterback to get snaps this season along with Bahar and Brandon Harris. Yeah, I was going to just make that point. Harris, the only other guy who's taken a snap at that quarterback position. Jones gets it on Jones again with the carry. second and four. Campbell It'll be third and a stop. long three coming up. Colby Campbell, who made the stop, the leading tackler for this Presbyterian team. On the way in today, I actually ran into Colby's dad, Glenn, getting ready for, for the game. And so happy to be able to talk to some of the Big South parents as well. And you know, Colby Campbell really is enjoying a great career. 14 tackles last week in the win over Campbell. Really leads to that defense. See here on third and three, Scott puts it up in the air. He will. Wants to let it fly. He wants it all and has a man down the field. Drop football from Brandon Batts. Pretty good throw. Batts will want that one back. Well, when you don't get a chance to play very often like Eddie Scott does and you put it on the receiver, you want him to pull it in and go and score the touchdown. Scott did what he needed to and uh, Bats is normally very sure-handed, plays in the regular rotation of Monmouth receivers. He wasn't able to secure the catch. Cost to punt. He's had a pretty quiet day. Inside the 10, that fair catch is called for and made by Max Simmons. Three nineteen remaining in the third. It's been all Mammoth so far today. Offensively sharp and thus far has pitched the shutout. Holding Presbyterian to just eighty four total yards. Inside the carry goes. For Presbyterian, Davis out close to the 20, uh, check at the 15. Yeah, we looked at the Pioneer League coming into this, uh, the previous drive, our last commercial break. You, Matt, when we're getting ready, we're, we're sitting here like, why can't they go play in that league next year? And, you know, we forget that they'll have to cycle through still a couple of years worth of scholarship football players before they can join the Pioneer League, which doesn't offer football scholarships. So that's why next year they're forced to be an independent. Quick pass to the outside, caught by Pearson, and a first down coming. You know, as we were getting ready for this game, I, I was kind of um, reminded, half remembered, that the last time the Presbyterian came in 2017, that was just after the announcement had been made that the team was going to transfer out of the Big South and scholarship football. So 
this is now the third season you get through next year, and essentially your scholarship guys should be gone by 2021. Yeah, and that's why they can't play. Now, the Pioneer League still has an automatic bid into the FCS playoffs, so they'll still have an opportunity to compete for a chance to get into the postseason. But next year's schedule independent, that's why when we came on the broadcast today, this, as far as we know, the, the last scheduled time these two teams will play. That doesn't mean they can't continue the series. And I actually love getting down to Clinton, South Carolina, whenever we have the opportunity. But that's why this one is the last time as two, as two schools are Big South members together. Play clock under 10 for Thompson. Flash to the outside, caught by Myers will be short of a first down on what was second and 11. You see the results for Presbyterian as well. They started the year with what their coach admitted was their worst effort of the year and a big loss to Mercer. But competitive games against Jacksonville and then last time out against Campbell, you know, give them optimism, you know, moving forward. And then they go after a tough one next week with Kennesaw, they go to Merrimack, who's a new FCS member. Yeah, they're getting their, sh their fill of Northeast travel, by the way, coming up here to Jersey and third, then going to Merrimack. Third and four, pass in the flat for Simmons is Not caught for a first down. They yeah, referenced it earlier, right now in the middle of five of six on the road. They started with three at home. They'll end with three at home. Gardner Webb, Charleston Southern, and St. Andrews. There are three final in Clinton. I do love the setup down there, by the way. One of the more kind of classic feel Southern stadiums that we've been to. Inside carry again for Davis on first and 10. He'll get about four, and that'll take us to the end of the third quarter. Mammoth with a 45-0 advantage as the Hawks 15 minutes away from picking up their fourth of the season.
This will likely go down as the biggest uh, win for Mammoth in the series history. This one started, however, for the Hawks when they joined the Big South on the first play. Neil Sterling took it in from 81 yards out, but it was Presbyterian who was able to get the victory, 18 to 12. That's generally been the way that these teams have played tight football games. Six-point win for Presbyterian that year. Five-point win for Mammoth in 15. Four-point win for Presbyterian in 16. And last year, a 10-point spread down at Presbyterian for Mammoth. The only shutout, or the only blowout, I should say, coming in was in 2017 when Mammoth doubled up 42-21. I think you can make a, a pretty definitive point. If you drew a line for this Mammoth football program between 2016 and 17, that's where things really changed. And that coincides with the biggest margin of victory in this series. Ball popping out as the tackle on Davis made. Davidson and Clifton in on the tackle, but causing it right from the get-go was Lowell Kelly Gamble. I thought that play was down anyway. It looked like the knee had hit. But this Monmouth program around 2017 is when they just kind of changed. And that's the year they made the FCS playoffs and then last season a strong eight-win campaign and well on their way to win number four here this afternoon. Long throw across the field, hauled in by Pearson. He's got his fourth catch of the day. An all-league player last year was Keith Pearson. And he's haven't had a whole lot of opportunities today, but that's a nice job to find the football Again, doing his damage from the slot. So hard to cover a good slot receiver when they break outside and you just have so much field to cover. Inside Davis, wrapped up and tackled as some new numbers starting to appear for Mammoth defensively. Tyrese Wright, the defensive back. Second down. And four. On second and three. Quarterback Reed and the keep for Thompson. Thompson dropped by Powell and Grimes. I think as much, and we made this point a bit ago, but as much as you know, Monmouth has had its best offensive day of the season, it's also their best defensive performance of the season. And really it's their best defensive performance going back quite a ways as we wear on here in the fourth quarter, we'll talk about it, but they're out gaining Presbyterian by about 200 yards plus, and the defense has been a big reason why this is as one-sided as it is. Davis dropped quickly in the backfield. Again, it's low Kelly Gamble wreaking havoc. Oh, just so much push. And if you're going to not block a defensive end, he's going to make a play. And low Kelly Gamble came untouched off that right end. And that'll end the Presbyterian drive. There was a little bit of thought over there on the sideline should they go for it or not. But now on comes the punting, punt team. RJ Bacon back in punt formation. Bacon to punt. Low wobbly kick. Morales fields it on the bounce at the five and slides forward to the six. Inside of 12 minutes to go in this fourth quarter. We're back for more action. Mama football when we return.
for the best variety of officially licensed merchandise in conference and school branded items at BigSouthStore.com. Gear up with some new apparel or find that perfect kit. Get fully equipped for all your game day fun with BigSouthStore.com. I love a good booth cam shot. The unpredictability of the booth cam is one of my favorite things. Scott handing off to Jones. Running off on the left side. Gets close to a first down. So some extended play here Jones for Mamet on the backups, getting some repetition. That offensive line still looking. Most of those numbers have stayed the same. See Brian Syracuse in. And Mammoth, generally a guy, a team that uh, will rotate some guys in and out in that offensive line anyway. He might not be in the starting five, but they'll play eight guys during the course of a game. First down run. Scott Prendergast, the sophomore from Howe, getting his first look on the offensive line. And you'll see, too, and Mammoth is now taking a lot of time in between plays. Bats will get it on the end around jet sweep. Good yardage, he'll pick up about seven. You know, Matt, outside of our game here, there's two other games in the Big South today. And last check, and one of them significant, well, they're both significant, but one is at least pertaining to one of these two teams. The last update down in Gardner-Webb. Hampton with a 24-21 lead over the running Bulldogs. Pass to the outside. Is caught by Asante Carney. It'll be the first completion in the college career for Eddie Scott. Feel for him a bit because he had a, a touchdown that was that was dropped. The other game just underway outside of Atlanta. Kennesaw State an early 7-0 lead over Charleston Southern. Touchdown pass from Daniel David to Shaquille Terry. If Terry does a lot of his damage on the ground, but anytime they get their slot backs involved in the passing game, that Kennesaw team only lost on the season to Kent State. They are just rolling along again. Under nine to go, high snap. It's popped around a little bit. Scott and Holden, who's coming at the running back. Holden able to fall on up. Romeo Holden. Romeo Holden recovers the fumble. Walks on the play for the Hawks. Second down. That was a miscommunication between both Scott and Holden as Jones will come back in. It's the Kennesaw State team that awaits Presbyterian next week. Another high week. snap that Scott has to go backwards to get. And Mammoth two plays, two bad snaps. Has resulted in two negative plays. All right, so here's what I know. And I never played for Kevin Callahan. You did. He's a little old school in the sense of it's 45 nothing, but he's going to demand execution regardless of who's in the game, and he's not going to find that acceptable. Well, he just took the backup center out and put his starter, A.J. Farris, back in. Well, there you go. I always feel good when I'm making a point, and it actually happens. It happens so few times, so I need to celebrate when it does. It is rare in many years of doing this together. I haven't yet gotten to five and had to go to a second hand yet. <laughs> Still on that left. Jones the run. Mammoth will have to punt it away after the two bad snaps. Kind of 
trying to think both of our punters have had the opposite afternoon, right? Cost has been probably the most quiet afternoon where Bacon might be the most busiest guy on the field today for Presbyterian. Monmouth with the win today will go to 13-1 and one since the stadium opened up a couple of seasons ago. Here's Simmons running forward and off the short kick from Cost. Simmons Presbyterian will start with their best field position of the day. It'll be first down for Presbyterian at the Hawks. 32 yard get Tyler Huff back in as well you know he's he's the freshman and he's the one that had some glimpses in the first half and I want to see more from the young quarterback Gib will go to Jaden Turner freshman running back Carry Presbyterian has gone work some new players in Del Vecchio Powell the second, a freshman running back in on that last snap as well. Second down and five. Have to think here, Presbyterian's best and perhaps last chance to get some points on the board. On the ground, running through one tackle, but not the second. Turner. was Turner. Good stop made in the open field by Solomon Manning, the former Rutgers Scarlet Knight. Yeah, Monmouth's still playing for a lot of pride. That defense, Matt, still playing to do something they haven't done in a long time, and that's keep a zero in the opposing team score column. You have to go back to 2006. Mama beat Albany 19 to nothing. Last time, the Hawks have had a zero on the board. In the flat, that is deflected away. Excellent defensive work by Matt Castronova. Fifth year senior has played quite well this afternoon. Had a tackle for a loss and a fumble recovery in the first two series of this game forever ago. And here still in the game, five minutes to go in the fourth and making plays, you know, play it much better than that without committing the interference and good coverage on the outside. Fourth and seven, just over five to go. Presbyterian obviously will go for it. Huff in at the quarterback, shotgun. Everybody into the pattern, steps up, pressured. He's gonna try and run for it, will not get back to the line of scrimmage. Finally cleaned up by Jonathan Bryce, the senior from Baltimore. Chains over in downs, and Monmouth will get the football back. Scott in at quarterback. Good snap, handoff goes to Holden. Inside out move, Romeo Holden to midfield and more. Down inside the 25 and bounced out of bounds around the 20 yard line. Holden doesn't see a ton of playing time with Guerrero and Jones in front of him. Good explosiveness there. Sophomore out of New Rochelle. Good patience as he got past the line of scrimmage. Right there, a little hole, and then that little dip with the left shoulder, setting him up for an out. Scott getting the snap. Handing off again to Holden. Fistful of jersey up front for Jalen Terrell, who will get credit for the stop. Terrell with the stop. Gain of one, second down and nine. 
Mammoth trying to take as much time as they can off the clock. Another give for Holden. Again, slipping tackles. Holden inside the 15, down to about the 13-yard line, where Mammoth will have a third and, let's say, about three. Crawford, first in on the stop. Third down. And three. Tucker will split himself wide to the left. Carney staying to the right. Another ball carry, another carry. This time's for James Farah, the James sophomore the out of Point Pleasant. He's going to get Mammoth a first down, and it'll be first and goal that from just three, inside the 10 yard down, line. First and goal. taking time in between the play calls. Jordan Hall, the freshman offensive lineman, has checked in at the left tackle spot. Scott, the zone read, bouncing it left inside the five, driving towards the goal line and stopped just and shy the inside carry. the one. Crawford and Mullins combined on the stop. Second down and goal from just inside the one yard line. Mammoth will go into a victory look. Would have to snap it. Still 25 and now rolling down to 20 on the play clock. So a snap here and maybe one more. That would wrap it up for Mammoth. Shows the respect between the two head coaches, Kevin Callahan for Monmouth and Tommy Spangler for Presbyterian. Hawks will get their first shutout in more than a decade. 2006, a 19 nothing win over Albany at the end of a championship season for the Hawks on that day. Your Hawks football team back in action at Kessler Stadium next Saturday. They didn't Saturday reset the play clock, so Mammoth won't have to snap it again, and that will do it. Kickoff at 1 p.m. on our annual homecoming game. Hawks fans, be sure to check out your Mammoth. Just as we were talking about, the respect between the two head coaches. For Kevin Callahan, fourth win of this season, 156 in his career. And Mammoth opens up conference play with a rousing win, 45 to nothing. We'll have some post-game stuff coming up for you down on the field with Eddie in just a second. Presbyterian will fall to 0-6 on the year. There's Kenji Bohar, another big day for the Mammoth quarterback. Take a look at our final numbers. There is Bahar's number, 16 of 23, 233. Had the three touchdowns. Daquan Grimes, big day defensively. It was Mammoth who started things off, got a couple of first half fumbles, helped them get out to a big lead in the first quarter and honestly never looked back in this game. From start to finish, pretty much all Mammoth. 45-0, the only quarter 
that the Hawks don't put any points on the board that last 15 minutes. Eddie standing by. He's got linebacker Daquan Grimes. Well, Matt, thank you very much. On the field now with Daquan Grimes. And Daquan, you and your defensive teammates really set the tone. You had the deflection on third down. First series of the game, then a turnover. And when the defense gets going like that, allows the offense to really get rolling 45-0. Yes, sir. Uh, we really just try to feed off each other every day. Um, that's in practice, in the weight room. Like, no matter what we do, we try to feed off each other. And today was just a great example of feeding off each other. So we got it going from the start, and we just kept it rolling. You get the close win last week. Big South play this week now for the rest of the season. How was the team refocused to get ready for conference play? Yeah, we know in, the, in our conference, like, every game is important. you got to go want to know every week. That's our message every week. And right now we're just focused on Gardner-Webb, which is next. So we'll take care of Gardner-Webb when Gardner-Webb gets here. Well, Daquan, I said it to Matt upstairs in the booth. I think you're the most underrated player in the Big South defensively. Congratulations on the win. I appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's Daquan Grimes after Mamet's win. Thank you very much. We're going to welcome in head coach Kevin Callahan now. And coach... Uh, Daquan, the defense, we got to start there. The program's first shutout since 2006 leading the way. Well, it was a great effort by the defensive side of the ball. You know, we wanted to go in and make sure we played physical and executed, and I thought for the most part the guys did that. You know, it was very important for us to start conference play with a victory and go 1-0, and uh, so we're happy to take this victory. You get the narrow win last week at Wagner, and then the momentum at the end of that game carried you in to this one. This team looks totally refocused, ready for Big South play. It, they are. We, uh, we had a really good week of practice. I think the kids were focused on coming out here and executing and being aggressive. Uh, the defense made some big plays early and got the ball back for the offense and really good field position and the offense capitalized on those drives and when you're playing like that when one side of the ball complements the other it, good things are going to happen and then whether it was P. Carrero because the offensive line was opening holes Kenji Bahar really showed the touch pass to perfection with a couple of long throws he did you know there was a couple he missed early that I think he wishes he had back but uh, he did have nice touch on it and laid the ball in it where it had to be Coach, really appreciate a couple of minutes. Wish you the best of luck. Congratulations. Thanks, Eddie. Appreciate it. That's head coach Kevin Callahan after a convincing 45 nothing win. Monmouth opening Big South play mat with a win over Presbyterian. Opening a win with Presbyterian and a big win at that 45 to nothing overall. Next up on the schedule for this Monmouth team, they'll be back at home. Continue Big South play with Gardner Webb coming in to town, a game that you can watch here on the ESPN family of networks. For Eddie Acapinti and on our tire crew from West Long Branch, New Jersey, this is Matt Harmon saying so long. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Enjoy a great rest of your football Saturday. Our final score from the shore one more time. Mama 45, Presbyterian nothing.